In our previous video, we converted an Eclipse project to Maven, and then we added dependencies for spring and prime phases. In this video, we're going to see what we need to do to integrate spring with JSF. First of all, faces config is the default configuration file for JSF, so we simply need to tell faces that it should use spring for object instantiation and dependency injection. In other words, when we want to make a Java object available to a JSF page, we're going to configure that object with Spring, and this is the entry we need to put into Faces Config so that Faces knows to consult with Spring on which objects it needs. That's number one. Number two, we need to configure Spring. Years ago with Spring, we would typically do all of the object instantiation and configuration in an XML file. And we can still do that, but there's an easier way. We can, we can add some annotations. And the annotations are things that will basically make our Java Bean objects available to JSF. So managed bean. Any Java bean that we want to make available to JSF has to be a managed bean. We have to give it a name so that we can tie that name up from the object to the JSF page. And then we also need to give it scope, where scope tells us how long that should be alive, how long that bean should be alive. Just for one request, in other words, one URL, or for the entire time that the user is using our website. Uh, there are about five different scopes, including session, request, singleton, and prototype. In our case right now, we're going to use session, but if you want to see more description on, on what all the scopes are, select this link here and it will tell you what all those scopes are. So, we need to configure Spring two ways. First of all, we need to make an application context.xml file, which is kind of like the, the root file for Spring. Secondly, we have to tell it where to look for classes that will have annotations. Now this is interesting because we have to give it this context component scan element and the base package means I will scan any package that starts with this edu.uc in our case. So that doesn't need to be the full package name it just says I'm going to scan any package that contains this tuple in, in the front, this, this selection in the front. So you can have edu.uc.dao, edu.uc.dto, .domain, .service, whatever you want, which I highly recommend anyway. Keep all your DTOs in one package, separate from your DAOs. Keep your DAOs separate from the service layer. Keep your DAOs and your service layer separate from the UI. But it's okay to go ahead and start them with the same edu.uc, which is typically your domain name in reverse. So, I have this all on our virtual machine, and I have copied it into a little buffer so we can, uh, we can go back and forth between the two. Uh, there is one more. We need to add some listener classes to WebXML, and that will tell it that this web project is using Spring. So we need to include uh, these, this information in our WebXML as well. Let's go ahead and start with that. I'm going to highlight this listener and listener class selection. And now I'm going to go to Eclipse, and I'm going to find our WebXML. WebXML lives under the WebINF folder, and WebXML is, is kind of like the very highest level configuration for our web project. That's something that's specific to Java, but not to Spring or JSF. WebXML is kind of a common paradigm. We saw before that we set our default file and we also matched anything in the faces directory and anything with the XHTML extension to our faces servlet. So we've been in this file before. Okay, I go towards the bottom and I paste in my two listeners. Uh, Control Shift F, just give it a quick reformat so it looks pretty. And then we're going to choose save. Okay, so now the web project knows about spring. Now we just have to tell faces about spring. So I take this text snippet, the same thing we saw in the PowerPoint. I'm going to go to Faces Config. And you see Faces Config right now is fairly empty. So I'm going to paste and I'm going to save. Now the web project knows about Spring and now Faces knows about Spring. Now we just have to tell Spring about Spring. So I'm going to copy this section again, very similar to what's in the presentation. I'm just going to uh, Control C. And now under web INF, I'm going to right click and say new. And then I'm going to say file. And we'll say application 
context.xml, which is the highest level configuration file in Spring. And I'm going to choose Finish. And now I'm going to Paste. So a, a root element called beans, which is the, the, just the very basics of what we need for Spring with a little bit of schema information. Finally, context colon component scan base package. Uh, since this is a plant places example, I'm going to call it com.plantplaces. You could also say edu.uc.jonesbr, something that makes it unique. Uh, either way, that's fine. I'm going to control S. Okay, Spring's configured. The web application knows about Spring. Faces knows about Spring. So the next thing we want to do is we want to try some things out. Here's my recommendation. Currently, our home page looks like this. Now, we want to put some autocomplete text on here so that the user can search for a plant. But let's start with something simple. Let's take this current hard-coded text and let's change it uh, so that it's actually coming from a managed bean. So I go to index HTML and I'm going to say H colon. Okay, well, it looks like I need to borrow some libraries from a, a JSF document. So I'm going to go to a document that I have down here and I'm going to go ahead and grab the XML and S from this HTML tag. And that is going to make my libraries available to me. Uh, the, the libraries I'm talking about See if we go up to my HTML. Okay, it looks pretty good. The libraries that I'm talking about are the JSF tag libraries. Let me just do a little bit of housekeeping here. They're the special JSF tags that we looked at in a previous presentation, which are very similar to HTML tags. They're just uh, kind of enhanced for JSF. Okay, so now you see I have a library, JSF HTML, and that library has an alias H. So I'm going to say h colon output label value equals and then I'm going to say double quote and close double quote and we'll go ahead and close off the tag. Now what comes be, what comes behind here maybe we'll say um, application dot slogan. So promoting plant diversity through education is going to be in a class called application and I choose save. Well, I do need just a little bit more uh, because if I'm pulling a dynamic value, I'm going to need a uh, I'm going to need a hash and then open curly and close curly. But just out of curiosity, let's see what we get if we refresh the page now without that information. Uh, currently, we get nothing. So let me go back and I'm going to say hash, open curly, and then finally close curly. And what that means is look in the managed beans for a bean called application and then invoke get slogan on that application bean. We'll save and we'll refresh. Still nothing, but we haven't created the bean. So let's go ahead and create the bean. Now, remember in application context, we said that we're going to put all of our spring annotation enabled beans in a com.plantplaces package. So I might go up uh, towards the top here. And I'm going to say Java resources and then source. And this is where all of our Java classes will live. The project, Java resources, and then source. So I right click and I say new and I say class. Okay. And for this class now, I'm going to say com.plantplaces.ui, the user interface class. I'll say application, super class slogan, that all looks good. And I'm going to choose finish. Okay, so now we have a very simple class. I'm going to say string slogan. And then I am in Eclipse. I'm going to mouse over the slogan, control one, and I'm going to say create getter and setter. That's fine. Okay, let me go ahead and give it a default value. We'll say, uh, we'll go ahead and say promoting plant diversity through education. I am changing the capitalization a little bit so that we can make sure that we're seeing uh, a dynamic data that's coming from this bean. I'm going to choose save and I have a few other things I need to do. I need to add the annotations. So we're going to start with at named, whoops, capital N on named, 
above the class. And so what that means is this is a class that can be referenced through Spring with a given name. We could specify a name in parentheses here, but if we don't, it's going to simply be this class name camel case, which means the first word is all lowercase. Every word thereafter, capitalize the first letter, no spaces in between. See, it doesn't know what named is, so control shift O, organize imports, and now it knows what named is. If that does not solve it for you, if, if you still get an error after that, uh, remember a previous video where we looked at our POM requirements? That named annotation comes in this dependency, javax.inject. Make sure you have that in your POM. Okay, we'll go back. Next, I just need to mark it as a managed bean, and that means that uh, faces can have access to it. Again, control shift O. Uh, we are going to say javax.faces.managedbean. That's fine. And finally, at scope, and then in, in uh, parentheses, session. And that means that this, control shift O again, uh, that means. I think what this guy we'll find out soon enough uh, that means that uh, this variable will basically be alive for the entire time the user is logged on to our application so I save now I'm gonna compile and I'm gonna forewarn you I'm expecting an error and that's okay uh, we'll work through it maybe we won't get the error but maybe we will I'm gonna right click run as maven install what that means is compile this project and then put a release version under the M2 directory. So choose Maven install, let's cross our fingers and see what we get. We do get an error and it's the one I thought. No compilers provided in this environment. Perhaps you're running on a JRE rather than a JDK. This is an error that once we fix it, we're not gonna get it again, let's hope at least. But what it is, is that we have to remember the difference between a JRE and a JDK. JRE, Java Runtime Environment, is used to run a Java program, where the JDK, the Java Development Kit, is used to compile a Java program. It eclipses a Java program running with the JRE. What we need to do is we have to tell it of a JDK so that it can also compile. So for that, I go to Windows Preferences, and Preferences, Install JREs. What you will typically see is a scenario like this, where you have a JRE directory, and that's your installed JRE. That will work until you get to this point. If you get this error, you have to install a JDK. I've already done so, so in theory, I can simply unselect the JRE and select the JDK. But if you don't have a JDK option, here's how to create one. Choose Add, Standard VM, JRE Home. From here, go to your computer and find out where the JDK is installed. Not just the JRE, but the JDK. For me, it's under Programs, Java, and then JDK 1.6. Notice I'm selecting JDK. I'm sorry, JDK 1.8. I'm selecting JDK instead of JRE. I choose OK. And it knows I already have one, so I won't finish this up. But if I were to choose Finish here, uh, it would create this JDK entry for me. I choose OK. And now I'm going to try that right-click and run one more time. So we're going to do Run As, and then Maven Install. And we'll see how this looks. It looks a lot better now because we have Build Success. So Build Success, and I look at my uh, index HTML. I'm going to make just a couple more changes here as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say h colon head uh, and h colon head. I'm just going to polish up a little bit a few tags that I would like to use from JSF and h colon body. And then we'll close out h colon body. And then we'll save. Build automatically is turned on. So it should build automatically. One other change I need to make is remember that the faces parser has to see this file. And remember that we have told it to look for anything in a faces directory or anything with an XHTML extension. Currently, it's named index.html, so that's not going to work. So I'm going to right click and choose rename or just choose F2, whichever is easier. Change the extension to XHTML uh, and save again. One other small change I need to make, I realized I mistakenly used a reserved word here. Uh, application is a word that's reserved for something else. So I'm going to select application. I'm going to choose F2. Let's call this application info. 
and we'll go ahead and refactor the name of our Java class. Since we're doing that, I'm going to need to change the name of the uh, value in this output label. We'll need to make that application info as well, and then we're going to save. Now, because I changed the structure of the program, I'm going to go ahead and restart the server. And we'll give it just a moment, and then we're going to find a new tab, and we're going to say localhost, and we're going to say plant places. And we'll give it just a moment to finish starting. And sure enough, you see the old text and the new. Let's clean it up just a little bit. We'll go back and take the old slat, uh, static text out. And we could, of course, uh, give it a font color if we want, or we can maybe put in just like a little uh, italicized. I guess we should really, uh, instead of italicized, uh, we could say the preferred uh, version, which is EM for emphasis instead of italics. It will show it in italicized text, but we're just saying, okay, emphasize this however you choose, the default being italics. I'll save that. won't take too long to redeploy because that's just an HTML change. Let's go back to our browser and refresh, and sure enough, you see now promoting plant diversity through education is showing an italicized font, and we're pulling that directly out of a spring uh, configured and an annotated beam. Very nice. So, what we get to play with next is maybe a little bit of advanced UI using the Prime Faces library, which we know is also integrated. But what we've proven out now is we're using Maven. We have the dependencies configured correctly. We have Spring configured correctly. And we have Java Server Faces working together with Spring. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.